Okay, everyone, welcome. Monday morning, stock market technical analysis. I'm just gonna go through some charts that I'm looking at this morning. Uh, you know, we're at some key levels. I don't see anything that's crazy out there today that's, you know, really pointing anything out, but I think there's some setups, there's some levels to watch for. Uh, and I, I think it's likely we're gonna get some sort of a big move here soon. So I wanna point those out. We'll start out here with the triple Qs. Uh, right now, we've got this bearish rising wedge. Right up here, the top of the wedge is this red line, which is not, you know, it's not my favorite because we only have three data points now. We've got one right here, one here, and then we're just now getting a reaction right now. So we'll see if that holds. The bottom trend line is a lot more uh, proven out, let's say. Uh, this is coming off the March 2020 lows tagged it here, tagged it all through here. Now we had a false breakdown, that was a bear trap, but uh, we're not, we haven't gone too far beyond that. So we're gonna watch, again, this could break up because this top trend line is not something that I'm really watching as much as the lower trend line. I'm looking for a break to the downside, some sort of a sell signal breaking down. Uh, until we get that, I'm just gonna watch it. Spy, oh, and going back to the cues, negative divergence remains, nothing's changed. That just has been building since, you know, the negative divergence really started to show up in the queues back here in uh, December. So we're going on, you know, almost two and a half months of, of negative divergence. I think we're getting close to the point in time where these, these should start to play out. Uh, and, you know, we just wait for that signal. Looking at the SPY, same, same deal, negative divergence. This one's really started to show up back in uh, November. So the SPY divergence has been there for, you know, three and a half months. And again, it's really at the point where it should start to play out as well. What do we have? On, the SPY has a few more things going on in the chart that are interesting. So the SPY you've got on the short term, this bearish rising wedge, see the green is the lower support line. The red is the upper trend line and much more reliable upper trend line. We have a lot more reactions around there. So you have this bearish rising wedge. We broke to the downside and came in for a back test. And you can see as I zoom in, we're kind of just hanging out right at that level. Here's the hourly. We're just treading water right in that area. We, we haven't really recovered it. We haven't been rejected. We're just, you know, it's trying to make a decision, I suppose. To me, it looks like it's going down, but at the same time, it could recover, and this could have all been a bear trap like it was in the triple Qs. Now, if the SPY starts to reject, I'm gonna look over here at the Qs and see what happens here. Ideally, I'm waiting for the Qs to break, uh, but if the SPY already starts to reject that trend line, and then the, we'll watch for the Qs, if it breaks, that's your next sell signal uh, that I'll be taking. Going back to the SPY, blue line up here, we also have this major resistance and that comes from the weekly, kind of the longer term time frame, going all the way back to 2009. Lots of support. We held that support line for many years. And then we broke. And if you really think about what's been going on since we broke right here, if, you're, you know, if you've been paying attention, it's based, the, the Fed has ba basically been trying to save the market. Uh, th there's not, we haven't been doing better on earnings. Yeah, you know, they'll come out and say, oh, earnings beat. Well, what did they beat? They beat crappy expectations, okay? They're not, they're not getting better. Earnings year over year are not getting better. Uh, they've actually been declining, I think, since about 2018, 2017-ish, uh, right around there. They've been, uh, right after the tax, you know, right around in this area, earnings started to decline and that's continued. They have not been getting better. So, uh, you know, it's something to watch for. And I'm talking about the market as a whole, not, you know, there's always some stocks where earnings are getting better and or some stocks where earnings are getting worse. I'm talking at, 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 as the market as a whole. So basically you can see here, we broke trend back in 2018, Fed cut interest rates and did more stimulus. That's your 2019 rally broke again based on the the uh, pandemic uh, breakdown fed cut interest rates again did a bunch of stimulus this time and that's your 2020 rally uh into 2021 but you can see where we're at now we're basically right there at that resistance level again so we should get rejected here it's a very i think it's a very high probability we get rejected 
And where are we gonna head on this one? Well, you know, I think we head down at least to this 350 area. So I'm watching for that breakdown. Here's IWM and just wanna point out the longer term chart going back on the weekly chart back to 2009. You can see we, we it looks very similar to the SPY. We had a one false breakdown right here, uh, but then it really got into a pattern and created a trend line. So you can see all of this, we held support all through here, held support all through here. We broke back in 2018. And again, this is when I started my channel. This is when I basically turned bearish and went sideways, broke down again. And now we're just seeing this huge, to me, what looks like a blow off top has, has already occurred basically in the small caps and we're running we're almost right up there to resistance around 231 55 you know somewhere right in there on the weekly chart so we're very very close the risk to the upside i think there's minimal opportunity to the upside and potentially a lot more uh possibility to move to the downside at this point in time kind of from where we're at right now so you know at, at the end of the day, the Fed created this rally and it, the Fed's probably going to wreck it. Um, you know, if they start to see signs that they need to start to talk, to, I would think they're going to start to try to talk the market down a little bit because the market is just, you know, it's this IWM is just going parabolic. So if they don't start talking it down, they run, you run the risk of doing a lot of damage. Yes, the market will run up and people will feel happy and make money. But when it starts crashing, it'll crash really hard and most people will end up losing money uh, and it will have the potential to do kind of longer uh, longer term damage so I think you know we'll, we'll see but I suspect they're gonna start to talk it down I would think soon uh, obviously we're watching the dollar and long bond so here's the TLT catching a little bit of a bid today not much though you can see here you know they bid up TLT a little bit selling off a little bit into the close the TNX is your interest rates. That's your 10-year treasury rates. That's what I'm watching. And I think a break above this 117 area is where the market's going to start to have problems. So that goes back on the daily chart. You can see really going back to 2018, this is when the Fed started cutting interest rates. So here's your downtrend line in rates. Been coming down the entire time. And you can see right where we're at, we're back testing. So a break above, if interest rates really start to rise, that's gonna cause a lot of problems. So that's what I'm really focused on is what, what, what happens right here. Do we, you know, do we get rejected and interest rates start to fall here? Or do they rise, spook the market, market has a big sell off and then they fall, you know, we'll watch that. <clears throat> Here's DXY, you can see on the daily, we're basically at support uh, this is where it, we had a spike right here, held resistance right here. We broke above it, and now we're right at right at that level. It's you know it's about 90, 96 or so on the DXY, 90 call it 91, you know right in that area. <clears throat> and this is the support area, so we should hold here. If we don't, we start to break down. Well, you know, then look for gold to rally. Look for, you know, look for, um, you know, stocks could, could continue to rally if the dollar continues to sell off. If the dollar holds here and we start to move higher, then we're going to watch for, uh, you know, we're going to watch for the stock market to, you know, start to start to break down. So things to watch on the dollar. Right now we're just at support. Fang just kind of hanging in there. Apple's hasn't been doing anything for a few days. It's just kind of sideways. Again, this is your earnings on Apple, and we've sold off a little bit of a kickback rally, but we're still below earnings. So that's interesting. <clears throat> Apple, you know, I'm looking for Apple to break this trend coming back from these levels in July. And there's kind of this upward trend line looking for that to break. Until then, we're just kind of keeping an eye on it. Microsoft just kind of sideways over the next few days. So we're watching to see what happens there. And Amazon, you know, Amazon still kind of below this resistance line that put, it comes off the, the all-time high in Amazon right there. So you can see we broke above it briefly and on earnings and it sold off. And so we're below that price on earnings. Google, Google's the one that looks, you know, relatively strong. Uh, it's stronger definitely than the rest of the fangs gapped up on earnings and it's still holding that strength 
So that one, uh, you know, looks relatively strong. We're going to have to continue to watch this. I suspect if the other things break down, <laughs> Google's going to break down as well. And it will it'll come in to fill this gap. That would be the first uh, target on that one. Okay, energy's catching a bit again. Um, so we're watching these levels. <clears throat> uh, we do have this, we have this cluster, this island reversal cluster top. Now we've already hit that level once and that's about 4486. So that was the area that I said, okay, it looks like a, probably a good opportunity to short. That did play out for a good short. Uh, but then we hit support uh, coming off this recent kind of rally, these lows. We got this trend line right here hit support and we're bouncing up. So the next level, I think we're probably gonna break this and we're gonna head up to the top of this wedge or the top of this island cluster, which is about 4680. Uh, looks like we've got some reactions back in here too. So that's got, we got some, re, you know, you can see the reactions that we had that held those resistance there, broke down, held those resistance again, and we're coming into that level. Uh, so I think if we break this most recent rejection level, which was about 44.75, then we're gonna head up to that top of that level, which is about 46.88, and that, that's gonna be resistance up there. So we'll watch that. Uh, I don't have any oil shorts. I closed, I started closing them out last week, uh, and you know, I, there's no oil shorts. I'm not long oil, uh, although I, you know, at this point, I'm really more concerned about what the dollar does and what the market's going to do. If the dollar starts to sell off or goes higher, oil is going to, you know, get, you know, going to be weak. So the the oil to me looks more like, uh, more like a dollar play. And so I'm kind of just watching the dollar to see where it's going to go. Okay, let's look at some of the trade ideas I've pointed out. Here's pins. I got short right here the other day at 86.42. So far, we're rejecting. Uh, we filled the gap. Uh, here's the gap right there. And so that gap sitting at about 78.15. So we could get a reaction here. Uh, they could, you know, run it higher. From the daily chart, I still think whatever reaction we get will be limited. Uh, and I think there's a lot more opportunity to the downside. I see that because on this daily chart, big negative divergence, it's intact. Uh, that it's confirmed basically, and I'm looking for uh, you know prices to continue lower. So maybe we get a little bounce, but ultimately on a swing trade, over time, you know m weeks, maybe months, it, I, I believe we're going to head lower. Next target I've got is about this $50 level. Uh, we'll probably get a reaction in there. We break that, I see us all the way down here at 25. Uh, 25 would be my final target for this. And there's a big gap right there, so we haven't filled that gap. So I think if we do head down, we you know we could fill 25. Uh, I'll, I'd be looking to take full profit at that point, uh, and not full profit. I mean, I take profit as we run into these support levels. So I take some profit. Okay, if we bounce, I can add back to a short, and then we roll over. I take profit. That's kind of how I do it. So moving on, Nike selling off a little bit today. I'm looking for a little higher prices in Nike. I'd like to get it up at this trend line around 148, 150. That would be coming off, you know, that's basically coming off the March lows. We hit support here, held support through here, held support, then we broke and back tested. There's another confirmation that that trend line broke down, ran into the first major support and got a good size bounce. I'd like it if we can get a little higher. I'm looking to short it up there. Until then, I'm just going to continue to watch this. Peloton. <clears throat> so this one really was a trade idea. It's a short idea all the way back here. So Peloton gapped up on earnings uh, back here December 22nd, it looks like. And that was the best opportunity for shorting that I could see, the most objective opportunity. The reason why I liked it, well, coming off the March 2020 lows, nice clean up trend line right there broke trend right here but when we broke trend we did not have any negative divergence on the momentum indicators so even though it broke the trend line the momentum was still saying it's bullish uh, and so then it came in for a back test gapped up right into resistance area okay right here on the after the earnings and when it did that it created negative divergence and so when that showed up that day, it looked like a, the most objective area to uh, for to take a short. 
So that this is where I took my short right there. As of right now, profitable by about 10%, nine, nine and a half or so. Uh, and looking for more downside though. This thing I believe is hasn't really gotten started to the downside yet. You can see this ramp zone right here. I think if we break the level we're at right about now, you know, kind of in this area, right around 144, then I think it'll be a pretty quick fill of this, this ramp zone area. So that to me looks like it gets us down to about 118.50 or so. Uh, probably get a reaction right in there. But a drop, you know, if we do that, that's gonna be a drop of about 17, 18%. Uh, from the high that from where I took the position that'd be a, almost 30 percent gain uh, but I think there's even more but I'll likely take some profit in that area and we'll examine those charts looking at the hourly here you can see we're just kind of flirting with the support shelf of 144.72 uh, and you know you can see we ran up and hit this resistance line we're downtrending we're clearly downtrending where we my line got moved but you can see here Basically, we're making lower highs, right? So we just need to break down to make that lower low, and that just kind of confirms that downtrend. But as of right now, it looks like it's going to happen. The other day, we ramped up right into that trend line, hit it, and stopped cold and gapped down the following day. And you can see every ramp sold. ramp, And this ramp is even smaller right here. So sold off, ramped a little higher, sold down, ramped it even higher, and now it looks like we're gonna start to break, break down. So again, looking for this 118.50 area. Qualcomm, so Qualcomm is on a sell signal. Uh, we can obviously rally from down here, and I, you know we could run up and gap fill. I think that's pretty likely that we actually do that. There's the level right there, 153.26. So I think we could rally up to that, hit that resistance, get rejected, you know, maybe a slight pop over it, get rejected, and then move lower, continue continue to move lower. My first profit target on this is about 129, yeah, it's about 130 or so. Uh, and, and then I'd probably stop out if we recover this trend line all the way up here. Uh, recovery of the trend line would be a, would be a clear stop. Um, or, you know, even if they start to ramp it up in this area, we really shouldn't get much above this 160 area right in here. You know, we start to break above that, it's likely we're going to go all the way in for a back test. Could probably stop out there, but ultimately, I think we are headed lower in this thing. Looking at the daily negative divergence right there, clean and clear intact, P upward price channel coming off the March 2020 lows, we broke. The price support there did a back test and were, was rejected. So to me, this is a downtrend, a, the, just the, the starting of a downtrend, and it was objective to short it up here at 163. So any kickbacks into resistance is a potential to add to a short, uh, and that's kind of what I'm looking at, looking at lower prices in that one. Neo, I haven't talked about this one for a while because nothing's really changed. We're just sideways right in this action. So. Negative divergence, okay, on the PPO and the RSI. That remains intact. We have an upward price channel right here. Uh, I think at some point in the near future, we're gonna be kind of at this price, at this trend line. Maybe we get a quick reaction up and then we break. But I'm looking for this thing to break down. Uh, the negative divergence tells me it's going to, but we have to break price support. And so the price support is this upward trend line. Uh, a breakdown and daily close below that would be the sell signal. And we'll look for, the, for this thing to unwind pretty quickly when that happens. Okay, gold starting to look interesting. Gold miners are starting to look interesting. I think there's potential for a little bit more downside, but I don't know if that downside is going to be reflected in the miners. Uh, looking at Barrett Gold here. So here's the trend line. This green line is kind of a major pivot line. We Going all the way back to 2013, this was the line that held his resistance. Uh, for quite some time. We never tagged it here, but we tagged it right here in 2016. And then as we move in, you can see tagged it again right there was we were clearly rejected and then we broke out. So there's your breakout, big impulsive breakout above that level. That's sitting about 2250 and chopped above it a little bit, came down, held it as support, moved above, 
And as we move in, you can see we're just kind of dancing with this trend line right now. So recent, there's, there's your 2250. We broke down below it recently right here, and we've now recovered it uh, just barely. It's, you know, right there at that line. So we could have a little more downside. But um, as of right now, it kind of recovered it. So what I'm looking for is we've got this trend line right here on the daily chart coming off these recent highs where we've been kind of trending down and we're making a bullish falling wedge pattern. Uh, a breakout of that trend line, uh, a confirmed breakout would be the next buy signal that I can see in Barrett Gold. We do have bullish divergence in the daily chart. See the RSI and the PPO, uh, they're trending up and price is making new, this made a new lower low or a lower low in this pattern. So that is a divergent low where you make a slightly lower price and yet momentum is moving up. Uh, that tells you that we're likely to reverse course and that's what I see in this chart. So I'm looking for that breakout signal, that next buy signal. Looks good to me on this one. They don't, they don't all look that good, but this one definitely is starting to set up for a long. Uh, and I haven't been long this thing since, you know, I got out of my trade back here at 2840. And this has been months, uh, really going back to last April. So not quite a year, but almost a year I've been out of this thing. And it now looks to me like it's, you know, getting set up for its next move higher. And the next move higher, I believe, is going to break above these these highs here. And we're, we're going to start running. Uh, where are we going to go next? Well, you know, once we break above that level, the all-time high is in sight, 55.72, 55.77 or so. That would be my target for the next uh, uh, next move higher on this thing. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up here, try to get the video out, let you guys know. I kind of let you guys know what I'm seeing today and, you know, not, not a whole lot changing today from Friday. So we'll just continue to watch the charts and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one.